Louise Brooks began her career in Hollywood, but after being disappointed and getting involved in some drama, she decided to give it a try in Europe. How do you think she did there? Did she become a legend, or was she sent back? Stick around to find out. But before we're getting into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed, and we'll do our best to personally reply to your comment. She began as a dancer. Like many in the 20s, when the movies were still gaining popularity, Louise started her career as a dancer in Los Angeles, dancing for Dennis Shawn School of Dancing and Related Arts. She was there for two seasons before she was fired due to the conflict she had with one of the founders, Ruth St. Dennis, when she scored a starring role with the other founder. Ruth told Brooks that she can't work for their company because she expects that everything will be handed out to her without her having to put in any effort. It took Louise ages to realize just how right Ruth was about that, and we will touch on this topic later in the video. Louise had no choice but to find another job. Luckily, she had a friend who got her a role as a chorus girl in George White's Scandals, which allowed her to become a dancer at the Amsterdam Theatre. Her start with silent films. The performances in that theatre made her noticed by Walter Wanger, who was one of the producers for Paramount Pictures, and offered her to work with the studio. The first time Brooks appeared on the big screens was in 1925, when she starred in The Secret of Forgotten Men. Even though she didn't receive credits for the film, it opened the doors to many light comedies which kept her busy for a few years. Neither of her roles was major, but she still got the chance to get a contract with both MGM and Paramount again. Walter didn't want their affair to make people think that she only got the offer to work with the studio because she was with him, so he pleaded her to sign with MGM instead. Behind the Scenes Usually in Hollywood, what we see in the movies isn't as it is behind the scenes. That is true now and it was the same in Brooks' time. While on the set of Beggars of Life, she went out with one of the stuntmen, and because she was involved with one more man, he spread a rumor of Brooks having a transmittable disease which quickly turned into a dramatic event. If that wasn't enough, she was constantly put in danger on set because the director of the movie had very risky ideas, having Louise hop on a moving train that almost cost her her life. No matter how much someone is trying to succeed, Brooks knew that this was crossing the line. Not taking no for an answer. With several scandals revolving around her love life, constant rumors on set, and Paramount saying no to her after she wanted a raise, Brooks had enough. She knew that she needed a change of scenery, and to get away from all the madness, one of her friends, George Preston Marshall, convinced her to join him in Europe where he promised to introduce her to an Austrian director, W.G. Pabst. Upon her arrival, Louise debated whether she made the right decision or not, and we wish that we could tell her that it was the best one she ever made for her career, because starting to star in Europe made her an absolute legend in the silent film industry. Becoming the Star of Europe The same year she ventured over the sea, she got a part in Pandora's Box. Pabst, who directed the movie, was looking for a fresh face to star in it. He turned down the famous Marlene Dietrich, and when he cast Brooks, a lot of people were questioning what he was trying to do as they didn't see the spark Pabst saw in her. Louise was grateful that with the drama she left behind in Hollywood, she had nothing but an amazing experience. She felt like she wasn't getting anywhere in Hollywood, while she appeared in one movie in Europe and felt like she became an actress the critics adored. They loved her natural style of acting, how she just is who she is without even trying to act, but on screen, it comes out so good. The audience was used to people exaggerating expressions and gestures in silent films, while Brooks did quite the opposite, and that is what made her stand out. Her return to America wasn't well received. Even though she became very loved in Europe, Louise returned to America the same year she came to Europe in 1929. She got roles in movies like God's Gift to Women, and no matter how hard she tried, the critics didn't care about her anymore. She felt like they were deliberately ignoring her because she left her country and tried finding work in Europe. The producers rejected her every time she tried getting a role in one of the bigger movies, and she started to think that she will never land a role that is not in a mainstream film. She could be making around $500 per week in Hollywood, working for Columbia Pictures, but she lost the contract because she didn't want to do an audition for a movie, but rather expected that since she was quite popular and her name was known that the role would be handed to her just like she thought all those years back working with that dance company. Not knowing where to go. She had some luck appearing in very low-rated movies after that year, but it was evident that her career already reached its peak. In 1940, she worked as a copywriter living in an apartment for $55 a month. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to keep the job, and not knowing what to do and running out of options, Luis became desperate to earn some money. Taking some time off and trying to redeem herself, she realized that the only way she would be able to have a career is if men liked her. And without knowing any other way to get attention or to get a job, she decided to go to her hometown. Brooks thought that she would be able to have a peaceful life there, but it turned out quite the opposite. People were disappointed in her because they believed that she could be a top star in Hollywood, and they didn't want to see her fail as she did. 
limited to nothing. Through the years, Louise was known to have many adventures with different men. When she divorced Sutherland, Marshall asked her to marry him several times before giving up, after finding out he wasn't her only lover. When she returned from Europe, she married a millionaire in 1933, but only after a few months she changed her mind, and not knowing exactly how to tell her husband, she left him a note telling him what she is going to do next and where she is going. Talk about a heartbreaker. Brooks said that despite being married, she never felt like she was truly in love, and that she is aware that she was the main reason none of her relationships lasted. If she had broken hearts, at least Brooks was aware that she made mistakes when she was young. An inspiration to many. Despite the ups and downs of her career, Louise Brooks was still a legend of her era. Without knowing and thinking she won't have her name written down in history, she was wrong. Louise has been an inspiration to many in a lot of different industries, making Liza Minnelli put Brooks' 20s persona into one of her characters. She inspired Adolfo Bioy Gonzalez for his novel and said that he wanted to pay tribute in his book to the girl that disappeared off the movie screens too quickly. In another book by Neil Gaiman, she is referred to as the greatest movie star of all time. And these are just a few mentions. We could talk about how many people she inspired for another half an hour. Louise shows us that even if you don't believe in yourself, others always do and sometimes pulling through hard times makes you see that. Like to so many, from music to books and movie characters, Luis inspired us to make this video about her. We hope you enjoyed watching it, and tell us in the comments below which part of Brooke's life inspired you the most. To see more stars and find out fascinating facts about them, make sure to watch other videos on our channel.